ladies and gentlemen. We hope that you are enjoying your meal. Please take your seats. We're going to continue with our awards presentation. If you could take your seats, we are ready to continue with our program. Glad to see everyone's having a great time, mingling, networking, growing those businesses. We are going to continue our presentation of BE 100's awards with the presentation of the Financial Services Company of the Year. I'd like to invite back to the stage Butch Graves and Derek Dingle. Um, they will uh, join us up here, and I'll turn it over now to my co-host, Mr. Ed Gordon. Thank you. All right, we just have a couple of more awards for the evening. And uh, anyone here from Cleveland? No? no nobody, nobody owning Ohio? All right. Well, y'all better hurry up and get Y'all better hurry up and get in front of that TV, boy, I tell you. All right. I am pleased to recognize Gen X360 with the BE100 Financial Services Company of the Year Award. The evolution of this company from an audacious idea to one of the nation's largest black financial services firms all started with a conversation at a barbecue. A casual chat between Lloyd Trotter, James Shepard, and the late Arthur Harper, all high-ranking General Electric executives and Ronald Blaylock, a leading investment banker, turned into a discussion about the development of a business model that would become transformative. That discourse led to the spawning of Gen X360 Capital Partners, so named because the firm represents the next generation of private equity firms that could, would create value through improving the companies it acquires. The founding partners secured roughly $500 million in capital from an array of blue chip investors. Today, Gen X360 has grown uh, to a capital number managing $1.3 billion. Their two funds acquire and invest in middle market companies in a range of diverse sectors that include aerospace, defense, automotive, transportation, food, and agriculture. As a result of its uh, spectacular performance in global private equity over the past decade, the company has earned the distinction of being named this year's BE Financial Company of the Year. As the firm grows, it continues to expand its diverse team and encourages its transactions that range from $50 or <laughs> 50 to, not $50, but 50 to $200 million <laughs> to achieve. <laughs> 50 to 200 million would have been a hell of a jump though, wouldn't it? <laughs> to achieve high returns, Gen X360 stays focused on investing in industrial manufacturing and business services companies with substantial business models, historical underperforming, uh, and family ownership among other factors. The firm also emphasizes inclusion cultures and investments in community developments. It is my honor to present the 2018 BE 100's Financial Services Company of the Year Award to Gen X360 Capital Partners. Here to accept the honor are founding partners Lloyd Trotter and James Shepard. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, this is one heck of an honor for Gen X360 Capital Partners. Rarely does the person standing on the same stage really deserve the honor. It's about the team. And a portion of my team is here. I want you guys to stand up. 
You're the guys that make us look good. You're the engine that makes it work. And I'm so proud of you. I am really, really proud of you. When we started this uh, journey, there were four founders, uh, Jim Shepard, Ron Blaylock, and Art Harper. Art, last year in October, uh, passed, and we sorely miss him. But the firm is alive and well, and we're going on to raise our third, the third, third fund at this point. The one thing that um, is important to us is, is it's not about what we can do, but how we help others. You know, how we reach back, help others develop, grow their dreams and visions so that they become successful. Just working on one of those circles about working on Gen X being successful isn't enough. It's not enough for any of us. I pinch myself, you know, after a 36 year career with General Electric, vice chairman of an industrial business, $38 billion in revenue, 100,000 employees around the world. Uh, this, second, this second act for me is something I always wanted to do, but I never got around to it because corporate welfare set in. And that was pretty good too. But, <laughs> but the reality for me was being on our own, having to navigate the waters that most African-American entrepreneurs have to do, having people tell you that, no, I don't think so, was something that we just couldn't accept and we're not gonna ever accept it. You know, the reality is we own 14 companies, uh, roughly the revenue is about $5 billion in revenue. Um, and, and, and we're not done yet. We're not done yet. You know, my wife would say I'm feeling retirement big time, but I'm having fun and so is she. So we thank you for the award. We thank you for all of the efforts that, uh, that Butch and his dad who started this has put into connecting the dots with black entrepreneurs and it's working. It's working. So thanks a lot. Congratulations again to Gen X 360. For our final award of the evening, the Trailblazer Award, I'll now turn the podium back over to Butch Graves. The Black Enterprise Trailblazer Award recognizes an individual who has broken barriers and blazed the path for future generations. Tonight, we recognize Harvey Bernard Gant, a product of the civil rights movement. <laughs> who became the first African-American mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina. A national political leader, champion of equality and a source of inspiration for many. His involvement in the civil rights movement started in 1960 when this talented African-American student from Charleston, South Carolina, graduated from high school and decided to become an architect. Although he entered Iowa State University in 1961, racially segregated Clemson University was the only school in his home state that offered a degree in his chosen field. So in January of 1963, with representation from the NAACP and an unprecedented ruling from the U.S. Court of Appeals, Mr. Gant won a lawsuit that enabled him to gain admission to Clemson, making him the first African-American to attend this formerly all-white South Carolina institution. Despite challenges, he earned an architectural degree with honors in 1965 and went on to receive a master's degree in city planning from the prestigious Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, in 1970. By the mid-1970s, he launched his own architectural firm with partner Jeffrey Hubberman in Charlotte's business district, undertaking projects that included the Charlotte Transportation Center, Transamerica Square, and First Ward Recreation Center. As such, he distinguished himself as a leading designer of structures and a builder of communities. Mr. Gant has been active in the political arena since 1974, when he filled a vacancy on the Charlotte City Council. He then served three more terms. And in 1983, Mr. Gant would make history with his election as Charlotte's first African-American mayor 
receiving more than 52% of the overall vote and 36% of the white vote. In his role as the chief executive of the Queen City, he served two successive terms, terms and fueled the growth of the municipality of more than 400,000 people. During his tenure, Mr. Gant focused on the revitalization of the inner city, among other areas. He continued his commitment to public service through his advocacy of vital issues such as parity in education and health care. And in 2009, the African American Cultural Center and this very city of Charlotte honored him by constructing the Harvey B. Gantt Center for African American Arts and Culture. in recognition for his civic contributions. For nearly, for nearly 45 years, he has worked to create an environment in which all citizens have a fair shot at gaining a solid education, meaningful employment, and a better quality of life. As such, he was one of the catalysts in designing a new South City of equal opportunity and unlimited possibilities. Black Enterprise today is pleased to recognize Mr. Gant with our Trailblazer Award. Please join me in saluting Mr. Harvey Gant. Good evening. I want to thank Black Enterprise, Butch Graves, and, and his father, Earl, and all the other folks associated with that very iconic publishing company for this Trailblazer Award. I don't know that I really deserve this, uh, but I do know that in that audience there are many North Carolinians, maybe even some South Carolinians, who I owe a debt of gratitude for their wonderful support of the things I've tried to do. And I thought I'd ask for a show of hands of the Charlatans that are sitting out there in the audience tonight. And, and, and many of you are so young, you might not even have remembered my days as mayor some 30 years ago, but your parents probably were involved, and maybe you licked a few envelopes to help us in those campaigns against Jesse Helms. But I'm very appreciative of this award, and for a lot of reasons, because folks helped so much along the way and all those various endeavors that we got ourselves involved in. I want to make this final statement, though. And it is how impressed I was with this evening's event. And it brought back memories of all the years when I read Black Enterprise magazine and had the chance to say to Earl Graves himself how inspirational, how inspirational that monthly issue always was for me. <clears throat> and I saw tonight why it's so great. You rewarded small businesses and I'm sure they got a huge amount of encouragement from what you did. And you recognize those who have achieved 
substantial wealth in their businesses and, and gave them their proper due recognition. I am encouraged by the fact that one of the key things for our continued development in this country is to have black entrepreneurs who are courageous enough, who are focused, who are determined, who are resilient to continue to work for economic success. Because when we become more economically successful, we will impact politics, education, citizens earning livable wages. We will impact our communities in so many good ways. And that's why it's important, it's important, it's important that you continue to do what you do, to have the courage to stay out there and to do the best you can. I'm, I'm also glad that you recognize that, that I ran an architectural firm for 40 some odd years and had the opportunity to see many of my young trainees go out and form their own firms and are doing the same thing reaching back to pay it forward. And that, to me, is an important part of what you do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the award show. Um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't thank a number of different people. First, I want to thank our co-hosts for the outstanding job that they did. Uh, I want to congratulate all of our small business owners. And of course, the small business awardees the BE100 honorees, and of course our Trailblazer Award, Mr. Harvey Gantt. So congratulations to all of our honorees this evening. I want to thank all of our sponsors, and in particular, our title sponsor for the last eight years nationwide. So thank you all very much for your support. I want to thank, we had um, I said this on Wednesday, but I would be remiss if I didn't say it again today. Uh, we had record attendance at the Entrepreneur Summit this year in Charlotte. Um, as, my fun, as my friend would say, as he made up this sign, hashtag BE in the QC, we had over 1,200 people registered for the Entrepreneur Summit. So congratulations to all of you. I want to thank in particular, and if we could raise the, the, the house lights up just a bit, um, I want to thank in particular the steering committee that we had here in Charlotte. I like the entire steering committee who helped us and worked tirelessly to, to put this together. The steering committee from Charlotte, would you please rise and be recognized for everything you have done. And in particular, from the steering committee, I want to recognize Kevin Dick and James, Kevin Dick, and my man, Smudgy Mitchell. <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank, because none of this happens in a vacuum, and none of this happens by one or two people. Um, I have, I'm blessed with having uh, the most uh, loyal and, and, and uh, I'm hard on them, no question about it, but the best staff that anyone could possibly have, and that is the Black Enterprise staff. Without, 
So I want the people from Black Enterprise that they would all stand. All the Black Enterprise people stand. Shelly, stand, please. And beyond the Black Enterprise staff, and not just the Black Enterprise staff, but our event staff in particular, because those are the people who are behind the scenes who you don't meet. It's not Derek and Alfred and Caroline and the people you see on stage and myself, but it's the people that really put this together, that work literally to two or three o'clock in the morning to put this together. And so our event staff led by Sherry Herbert and um, all of them, right? It, we are, we're a company that has about 60 full-time employees, 70% of which are women, by the way. Um, so I want to thank our, our BE event staff in particular. So let me give them a round of applause for our event staff. Last, um, not lastly, but I would be remiss um, when we talk about the next generation if I didn't introduce um, the next generation for me. I'm, I'm a second generation. Um, Earl Sr. started Black Enterprise in 1970. Um, I tell him I'm the better looking of the two Earls. <laughs> um, but two of my children are here tonight. Uh, and so my son, Earl Graves III, we call Gibby. Stand up, Gibby. <laughs> Gibby just completed his third year at Goldman Sachs and is going to Dartmouth Tuck School of Business in uh, September. And my daughter, Kristen Graves, who works with me now, who's our social media editor. She is single but unavailable. <laughs> For those men that were interested in. <laughs> as well as I also have um, my brother Michael is here, and I want to recognize him as well. So my brother Michael Graves, who's sitting, who's sitting out there somewhere in the back as well. Um, Smudgy wanted me to say, see you all here next year. I can't say that to him quite yet. But I will say you've given us a lot to think about. <laughs> uh, so with that, um, as Ed said, for those of you who are Cavaliers fans, including myself, um, I wish you good luck next year. Um, what is the current score? There's still a chance. 39-38. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to invite all of the honorees, all the honorees who received an award, please come backstage so we can take uh, photos with the step and repeat. And to all of you, have a blessed, blessed night. Get home safely. And thank you all from the bottom of our heart. Oh, I'm sorry, Kristen. Yes. I'm sorry. There is a giveaway. I'm sorry. There's a Twitter for whoever's been doing the most tweeting or whatever that is that they do. Okay. All right. Um, also, don't listen to what he said before. Okay, so the winner is, um, if I say your name wrong, I'm really sorry, um, Uchenaya K. Ogba. Okay, he's winning a Samsung Galaxy tablet. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all again.